Hello painting students. This is week four painting lesson with watercolor and I'm going to walk you through it. Um, here I have, you know, sort of a small sheet of watercolor paper. We're going to be doing watercolor layering and we're going to be using fruit as the subject. So I'm going to draw a pear and I love pears for this because the roundness, there's kind of a couple of different um, places where you're going to get highlights because the roundness changes as it goes. So I'm going to fill the space fairly well, really lightly with pencil. You don't want pencil lines to really um, invade. Sometimes I'll draw and then I'll slightly erase if I feel like I drew too dark. I just need to have my spaces mapped out. Now we're going to take two stages, basic stages for this painting. One is to paint the light and shadow and we're going to let it dry. And then we're going to do the local color, what we call the local color, which in the case of a pear would probably say green. I'm going to mix a really pale yellow and I'm going to plan where the light's going to hit. And the lightest part of where the light hits is going to be straight up white. I'm going to paint sort of around the white. I don't want this yellow to be super bright, but most light is warm in color, like sunlight tends to hit something and feel yellowish on, you know, on the object, or an incandescent bulb is usually kind of yellowish. So what I'm doing is planning where the light's hitting in a really watered down warm color, and this is also letting me know what to keep white, because I don't want to have to paint white paint. In fact, traditional watercolor, you never use white paint. You use just the white of the paper to be your whites. And watered down colors um, let the white of the paper show through for lighter versions of a color. So this is really quite a pale, um, pale treatment of the light. Less pale will be our shadow color. And I'm going to use the complement of yellow, which is purple. They're opposites on the color wheel. I like to make the purple a little bit complex. So if I've got a watercolor set that has like a couple of red violets or blue violets, sometimes I'll take a little bit of all those colors and put them in, sort of mix it up. The darkest part of the shadow is going to be right under there where it touches the table. Then I'm going to just grab a little bit of water and let the shadow move out. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to grab that pure, pure purple again and let that darkest part get another layer. And the wet next to wet will let that bleed. I'll probably do this again in a minute or two. Now I'm going to take that purple, I added a little water to it, and I'm planning the shadow side of the pear. I would recommend having a photo of the fruit that you're trying to paint on your chromy screen, or if you have fruit in your fridge or on the counter in a fruit bowl, actually taking the real fruit setting it up in front of you with maybe a spotlight or putting it by a window so there's a really strong direct light shadow source going on. I'm going to grab a little bit of a more intense, slightly um, redder shadow and let the wet into wet kind of do its thing. And I'm going to grab another layer there for sort of a darker section. I'm not using any black paint. That Black paint is kind of one that kills color. little bit more dark through there. I don't want to scrub the page or overwork it. Maybe I get a little bit into there. If I were to let these two um, colors touch right there, they're going to bleed together and it kind of ruins the separation. So sometimes I'll leave like a tiny skinny white line between two sections when I am doing an edge in watercolor. So this is step one. I will rotate it, hold it up close so you can kind of see what we're doing. This is 
pale yellow, white highlights, and violet shadows. I have a second version that I've already completed of this that is dry because you don't want to put um, more paint on this, otherwise everything's going to get muddy. This one has been drying for probably 20 minutes or so. Um, I know it's dry when it doesn't feel cold when I touch it. I don't want to like just touch it all over the place if it's drying because I'm going to lose, I might like fingerprint and smudge some of my interesting watery effects. But once it's dry, I can layer. And I'm going to use what's, I, we call it the local color. Like the color, if you ask a kid what a pear is, they're going to say green, even though there's a lot of complexity to the color. I'm going to mix the color that I feel like I want, which I'm going to take yellow and some of that yellow green. And I can always make the color darker, but it's harder to make the color lighter. So I'll probably do a couple of different passes of this, remembering that the main the main color is going to be in that transition area. You're going to see the, the most intense green between the light and the shadow. But the shadow, I'm going to layer over the shadow, but the shadow is going to show through. And that should start to look like a dark green rather than a purple. You'll still, it'll still feel purple at, like to your eye a little bit. But in the finished painting, it'll feel kind of correct. I'm going to add some yellow to this green and quite a bit of water as I plan. Oops, that was a lot of water using my napkin to clean that off a bit um, to kind of plan. I really do want that highlight to stay white. And this should feel warmer. It should feel like some of the yellow maybe is showing through here. And then as I look at my either my real pair or my photo or whatever, I might find some little sections of, of color layer to bop in there. Maybe there's a little bit of a darker or a brighter um, version of your color. You don't want to scrub again. You want to kind of let, like, kind of let the color go down, and then let it bleed. You know, wet into wet kind of bleeds nicely. Let it be painterly. Don't overwork it. Um, but there's a lot of right answers with this technique. Same with the table color. Like I, I drew a line for a table, and I've got this shadow. Um, but let's say I want this table to be. Let's pick a color. How about um, red? So I'm going to get some red paint. I'm going to be careful not to let this paint touch what I just did that's still wet, which is the green paint. Otherwise, you get a bleed. If that happens to you and you're, you don't love it, if, you know, sometimes that you can let those be and they look good. But if you don't love it, you can dab it away if you get it early on with a paper towel and then let that dry before you come back to it. But I think I'm going to be able to succeed here with the red. And again, as I paint this red tabletop, I'm just going to cover right over the dry purple shadow and it should sort of turn it into a shadowy dark red. I'm not going to avoid the shadow and paint around it because then it'll look like there's a purple spot on the table rather than looking like it's just a darker red. And gradations always look more interesting than um, than solid colors. So modulating using what watercolor effects you might have um, or have experimented with. Sometimes I'll go in and put a little more of an intensity of a color in. Sometimes I'll, you know, do little bits of stuff. Um, I would also encourage you to paint the background. I'm going to do orange because it contrasts well. Maybe I'll do a gradation from a more carroty orange to a more like a yellow orange here. Usually if I'm painting like this, I leave a little white border. Either you want to tape the um, tape the page down, but if you're painting small, it usually works okay just to leave sort of a white border around the edge. 
so that the paper holds its integrity a little bit. I just want to remind you, make sure if you're trying to layer colors, you need to let the, the paint dry between. And if you don't, it's going to be muddier. the effects I can get in here. I'm gonna just drip some edge into that because I kind of like it. All right, so there you have it. I encourage you to do at least one of these this week, but you might make one of these and think, hey, I want to do an apple or you know some other type of fruit and do a companion piece, so two or three. Um, I think you'll enjoy this, uh, post the work when you're done and I will see you later.